with World Honeybee Day approaching this Saturday, we're here today to talk about the Birds and Bees Protection Act, a nationally leading bill from Senator Br Brad Hoyleman Siegel and Assemblymember Deborah Glick that would eliminate needless and harmful sources of neonicotinoid pesticide pollution in New York. Neonicotinoids, or neonics for short, are neurotoxic pesticides known for driving mass losses of bees and other pollinators in New York and across the globe. But we now know that their ecologically destructive impacts are likely worse than any class of pesticides since DDT. In May, the US EPA made the shocking and unprecedented finding that neonics are pushing 200 plus endangered species toward extinction, roughly 11% of the entire endangered species list. It's not hard to see why. Among the most potent insecticides ever created, neonics have made US agriculture nearly 50 times more harmful to insect life, with just one coated corn seed having enough active ingredient to kill a quarter million bees or more. Designed to permeate plants, making the entire plant toxic to insects, typically only two to 5% of the active ingredient makes it into the target plant when applied, leaving the other 95 plus percent in the soil where they persist for years and migrate long distances in rainwater to contaminate new soil, water, and plant life. Widespread and wasteful use has made neonic pollution virtually ubiquitous in, the, in large swaths of New York, and we see evidence of that vast contamination all over New York water supplies and the bodies of New Yorkers, with a recent study finding neonics in the bodies of over 95% of pregnant women tested in New York and four other states. With plummeting bee populations already lowering yields for top crops like apples and cherries, science also links vast neonic contamination to mass losses of birds, the collapse of aquatic ecosystems, birth defects in deer, and malformations of the developing heart and brain and autism-like symptoms in children. The Birds and Bees Protection Act addresses the heart of New York's neonic problem by eliminating uses that extensive Cornell University research shows are not necessary or easily replaced with safer alternatives. While not as sweeping as the European neonic ban, it's a solution well tailored to New York that would eliminate 80 to 90% of the neonics entering the state's environment every year. With the damage from neonic pollution only getting worse, we call on the governor to sign the bill by this year's Climate Week to show her leadership in protecting New York's environment and health and follow through on her stated commitment to bees and other pollinators. So with that, um, we'll start with our first speaker, um, Senator Hoyleman Siegel, Chair of the Senate Commission, Committee on Judiciary and Senate author of the bill. Well, good morning, Dan. It's great to see you and so many advocates here today fighting for a cleaner, safer, healthier environment. It really is something that is top of mind for my constituents and so many New Yorkers as we watch the horrible impact that man-made uh, pesticides and decision-making has had um, on our environment, uh, just something that is uh, well past uh, our need to uh, address. And that would include the use of these dangerous pesticides that we're discussing today, neonicotinoids. And I want to first thank my colleague, Assembly Member Glick, who chairs the Environmental Conservation Committee in the State Assembly. For the first time, we were able to pass the Birds and Bees Protection Act in both houses as the same legislation. And I'm very grateful to her for her leadership in that way. Um, we know uh, that we're fighting against neonicotinoids, which are emerging to be the most ecologically destructive pesticides since DDT. And just this May, the US Environmental Protection Agency found that neonicotinoids are driving over 200 species toward extinction. So it's no wonder that Europe has banned these chemicals in agriculture since 2018. 
we're proud, along with Assemblymember Glick, my team, to have advanced this legislation, which would be the first in the nation to address these neonicotinoid seed coatings. In addition to driving down the populations of critical pollinators like bees as we celebrate International Honey Bee Day, neonicotinoids are linked to a host of health problems in humans, including neurological damage and birth defects. And as Dan said, our bill would eliminate 80 to 90% of neonics entering New York's environment by restricting their use in crops where they make little impact on crop yields and we would stop their use outside of agriculture. I I'm proud that the New York State Legislature passed the Birds and Bees Protection Act this year Thanks to the efforts of everyone here uh, as part of this coalition, including uh, the chair of my chamber's Environmental Conservation Committee, Senator Pete Parkham, who helped us negotiate the final bill. Uh, in addition to Assemblymember Glick, Assemblymember Salages, uh, thank you to the NRDC, the Citizens Campaign for uh, the Environment, Sierra Club. And this is truly, uh, an effort on the part of advocates. So in honor of International Honey Bee Day this Saturday and in time for Climate Week in September, I'm hopeful uh, Governor Hochul acts to support our environmental and physical health and sign our legislation. And let me just say, um, this is an issue of critical importance I trust the governor recognizes the need to rein in these dangerous chemicals, and I implore her to sign the bill and let's make our environment healthier and protect our pollinators, which provide the crops and the food for New York's population. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you, Senator, and, and thank you so much for your sponsorship and championing this bill in the Senate. Um, our next speaker is Kareem Hanch, a New York farmer and owner and manager of Love and Mama Farm in Amsterdam, New York. Hello, my name is Kareem Hanch. Um, as an organic farmer and a mother, I'm urging Governor Hochul to sign the Birds and the Bees Protection Act today. The signing of this bill will leave a beautiful environmental legacy for future generations with clean water, clean soil, and an intact biological community of pollinators that we all rely on for the production of fruits and vegetables. So as we know, the Birds and the Bees Protection Act bans dangerous neonicotinoid coated seeds in New York State. Corn and wheat grown from neonic coated, seed, coated seeds cause near instant death to any insect who touches these plants. And we are seeing dangerous levels of insect die off. Um, farmers like me, we rely upon insects, i.e. pollinators, for our fruiting crops and our seed crops. Um, plus we rely upon beneficial insects for pest control. To be brutally clear, without pollinators, we face living in a world without fruits or vegetables. Um, organic and regenerative farms like mine, we rely upon beneficial insects and songbirds as pest protection. We see our farm as one giant organism, and we build health not by spraying toxic chemicals, but by creating habitat for beneficial insects, amphibians, reptiles, songbirds, and other predators. So we use deep compost and straw mulch with regenerative low-till and no-till methods on our farm to keep our soil intact and to build organic matter in our soil, which helps sequester carbon. Neonics, on the other hand, negatively affect soil microbial health. Um, and uh, so neonic coated seeds are most likely contributing to climate change. I know that the governor is working hard to battle climate change through agriculture in New York State. So signing the Birds and the Bees Protection Act today is one of the best things she can do to combat climate change via agriculture. Another big reason for the governor to sign this bill is because we have the evidence that neonic coated seeds provide no net benefit to farmers, according to over 1,000 studies from Cornell. 
So the only benefit neonic coated seeds bring is to the pocketbooks of big ag and the petrochemical industry. Um, as a mother, I know that true wealth is healthy children. I'm deeply concerned about the serious health side effects, including autism-like symptoms, fertility, and an, an attack on the endocrine system from neonics in our food and our water supply. So neonics are a known neurotoxin that can cause the placenta, and over 90% of tested pregnant mothers have neonics in their blood. We already have an autism epidemic among our children. Why on earth would we continue to allow neurotoxins to be used in our food supply? Governor Hochul, you have the chance to do the right thing for the beloved children of New York State. Sign the Birds and the Bees Protection Act today to protect the future generations and to make sure they live in a world with bees, butterflies, songbirds, apples, blueberries, pumpkins, and clean soil and water. Thank you. Thank you, Corrine. Our next speaker is Dr. Kathleen Nolan, a pediatrician, Ulster County legislator, and president of Physicians for Social Responsibility, New York. Thank you. The Birds and Bees Protection Act is basically pointing farmers towards something that is their goal, just as much as it is the goal of the advocates here. That is to provide healthy food to our public. These neonicotinoid insecticides are nicotine-like compounds. That's what the word, what the name of these pesticides means. And we can't add nicotine-like compounds to our food through using these seeds and have there be no effects. The effects are on the environment in every area that we can look, every animal that is exposed, and we're hollowing out the ecosystem but there are studies now suggesting that humans too will experience these effects if the levels get high enough. And the levels have been going up year after year after year through continued applications. So as a pediatrician, I'm very eager to protect the women and children and families of New York State. I call upon the governor to do the same. We also have a responsibility not to burden farmers. And that's why this bill is so tightly tailored to only to address those uses which are harmful and provide no benefit. That is the area where we can all agree that we can rid ourselves of these contaminants and move forward to have a healthier food system without hurting our farmers in New York. And in fact, potentially helping them. So really urge the governor to sign this and uh, step us into a new era. Thank you, Dr. Nolan. Our next speaker is Adrian Esposito, Executive Director of Citizens Campaign for the Environment. Good morning, everyone. The message today is clear. Governor Hochul, if we're going to save the planet, we need to start by saving the bees. And that's our message today is to please sign the bill. Our coalition has worked for years on this bill. This bill is crafted to be a very specific targeted bill. We worked with a diverse coalition to craft this bill to uh, and in which it will have great meaning. One of the problems with neonicotinoids is that the use of it has dramatically increased over the last two decades in New York State. Consequently, uh, that means that neonicotinoids are the most common pesticide found in New York's water supply. So not only is this a threat to bees and our pollinator populations, but it is a threat to water ecosystems, marine environment, and public health. For, from Montauk to Tonawanda, we're finding neonicotinoids in water supplies. For instance, in the Great Lakes, 74% of tributaries sampled contained at least one neonicotinoid pesticide. It doesn't stop there. Places like Long Island that have a sole source aquifer, which means 100% of our drinking water comes from underground, are finding neonicotinoids are the most common pesticide found in our groundwater, and we have 121 of them. 31% of samples are finding neonicotinoids in them in our drinking water supply. 
It's of particular concern to the east end of Long Island, where the greatest amount of private wells are found. And that's where the highest level of agriculture is also found. These pesticides, as was stated earlier, are neurotoxins, which means they damage our nervous system and they are being linked to liver damage and liver cancer. So there are a variety of health ailments. They are depleting our bee populations. They are killing our pollinators. And we're calling on Governor Cuomo to take this extraordinary opportunity to sign the bill. I also want to say this bill is wildly popular, popular with the public. There's been a beehive of activity by the public to send letters and emails, um, postcards to the governor asking her to sign this bill. Thousands, in fact, uh, asking the governor to sign the bill. So the public support is strong and consistent and statewide uh, for this bill. So we really need the governor to take this moment in time, be a champion in saving our food supply, our public health, our water supply, and most importantly, our bees. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Our next speaker is Peter Nelson, a New York beekeeper and director of the documentary film, The Pollinators. Hi all, um, thank you for having me today. Um, as a longtime beekeeper in the Hudson Valley, I applaud Senator Hoyleman Siegel, Assemblymember Glick, the committee chairs, co-sponsors and their leadership on this important legislation, the Birds and Bees Protection Act. I'm grateful for the state Senate and assembly for coming together and passing this, and I urge Governor Hochul to sign it. Uh, the passage of the Bird and Bees Protection Act is a major accomplishment and a win for all beekeepers in New York State, as well as the general public. Regulating the use of neonicotinoid insecticides is a huge step towards creating a less, to less toxic environment for managed honeybees, as well as the hundreds of species of native bees and other beneficial insects and birds in New York. Honeybee colony losses have been over 40% in recent years, which is a startling percentage and not sustainable in the long term. Preliminary loss data from the Bee Informed Partnership up to April of 23 of this April of 2023 is looking over 45%. And while that's not the only factor in honeybee colony losses, neonics are a major contributing factor. The neonics affect the bees' nervous systems, reproduction, and cognitive functions, which stresses and weakens honeybee colonies and makes them more susceptible to other pathogens and parasites. Through my work as a filmmaker doing films about bees, I witnessed heart-wrenching losses of hundreds and hundreds of honeybee colonies as a result of pesticide exposure. Systemic neonics move easily through the environment in the water systems, soil, and airborne dust, and toxic their to the toxicity lingers in the environment. Neonics have been one of the leading contributors to pollinator decline, which in turn threaten our food production and our food security. The literal downstream effects of neonics in our waterways threatens aquatic insects and fisheries, as well as the birds and mammals that ingest them. The Birds and Bees Protection Act is important legislation that will benefit our bees, our birds, and indeed the health of our own families by limiting the use of these toxic uh, substances. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Our last speaker will be Dylan Klepitar, farmer and owner of Echo Farms in Essex, New York, and advocate for the Essex Farm Institute. Thank you, Dan. Um, and thank, thank you, all of you, for bringing this bill to prominence in the, in the debate about the use of chemicals in agriculture. I think I'd first like to point out that um, farmers are in the business of growing food and the way we do it in New York State, we have a lot of different kinds of farms um, and a lot of our food or the food for our animals comes from crops that essentially use uh, any number of tools and chemicals to grow. I, I think that's why there's an industry around this class of chemicals. Um, that they're useful to some farmers. Um, the problem with that is that these chemicals also restrict uh, our ability to rely on those ecosystem services that we need in the future. And so I would just add that even if these, these chemicals are effective on farms, they're not effective on our farm. We don't use treated seed. Um, there are other ways to control pests um, and not all of them are monoculture based. Sure, there'll be some adaptations in agriculture, but um, that's what farmers do. Um, we adapt 
and we problem solve creatively. So, you know, the fact that this bill is giving the seed industry time to transition and farmers time to transition, um, this is about the future of farming. And if we don't have pollinators, I can tell you we're not going to grow grow all the food we need for New York's population by painting on the pollen that we need for our crops. That's just not feasible. And so um, it's just something it's something to be aware of that that we can't we can't farm in a way anymore that 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 mortgages the future. And so uh, I encourage the governor to sign this bill. And um, for the farmers out there, I encourage us to take a collective ownership over this and and think about the future of farming instead of just a cash crop year to year. Um, so yeah, thank you all. I think that's all I have, Dan. Great, thank you, Dylan. Um, so that marks uh, the end of our um, remarks. Uh, we can take questions now and folks can do that one of two ways. They can either put a question in the chat or if you raise your hand, we can find you and call on you and you can unmute. Uh, and I'm seeing Kate Lisa. Hi, good uh, good morning. Uh, specifically for the senator, would love to know that um, to just um, how last year the governor vetoed legislation that would have um, allowed municipalities to regulate um, right application of pesticides on on their local wetlands, right? So, and I think she said she said that it would undermine the DEC's such story authority to study and regulate pesticides. Why do you think this will be any different? Do you think that, you know, why wouldn't she veto this for the for a similar reason? Well, you know, I hope she has seen the light that this issue is only growing in importance. And we have seen documented evidence of the impact of neonicotinoids on pollinators. Again, on World Honeybee Day, we celebrate these amazing creatures that make our farmlands productive and feed our population. It is incumbent on us to recognize the science and develop suitable alternatives to neonicotinoids. New York State can literally disrupt the pesticide and chemical industry with this legislation and provide the safe alternatives to neonicotinoids that are necessary. We also think that this bill has rail guards in place that should allow the executive to negotiate through the Department of Environmental Conservation the options for farmers and if suitable alternatives don't exist if they're not if the market doesn't respond then the process does not move forward so that's a key component that i think has to be recognized by um the governor as she deliberates over signature of this legislation and you see a lot of us here today with a bee in our bonnets to say the least because we know how important it would be should New York be the first to restrict dangerous neonicotinoids. And the science is only growing. So let's do it now. Let's take advantage of this moment to ensure that we have a healthier environment and preserve this key component of our food, and agricultural industries. And have I just want to jump DEC, in. You know, just quickly to follow up on that, has, have you spoken to the DEC about that? I mean, is this something that they're um, concerned about? Are, are, you know, are they part of the pushback? I, I wouldn't say there's pushback at this moment. We're, we have developed, you know, a, and uh, we, we have passed a bill that, that was subject to a lot of negotiation, um, again, uh, thanks to the efforts of Assemblymember Glick and Senator Harkin uh, and the advocates, we have gotten to a place that we think both industry, environmentalists, 
and policymakers can be comfortable with. And I'd love to invite uh, some of those advocates to speak on the negotiations and how we have really brought forward a bill that we think everyone can embrace. Yeah. Or, well, I, I would just add to just just really quickly, just on in, in terms of DEC authority, it's it's important to note here that DEC currently doesn't regulate seeds treated with pesticides, and that's a major component of the bill. And to give you a sense of how this has worked in practice with neonicotinoids in the mid two thousands, DEC actually refused to permit uses of one of the neonic chemicals, clothianidin in outdoor settings in New York. Yet clothianidin is estimated to be the neonic that is most widespread, the, the largest used in New York agriculture. Why is that? Because the seed, because the seeds that come in, the corn and soybean seeds are treated with clothianidin in Illinois or Iowa, and then they come into the state and are planted into New York soil uh, without any regulatory control. So this is actually an area where, where DEC has not been exercising that regulatory jurisdiction. And the bill actually brings the agency much more into the control of those treated seeds, given the guardrails that, um, you know, Senator Hoyleman Siegel just spoke about. So um, this bill, and, I, and just to the negotiations, yes, this bill has been a long time in the making and has involved numerous conversations with the agency and their input. Adrian, did, did you have anything to add? No, no, you, you said it well. I don't need to respond. I think we can move on to Elsie. Okay. Uh, it's Elise, uh, but I get killed Elsie a lot. Just uh, This is for the Senator. Oh, sorry Hoyle. about that, Elise. That, that's okay. Um, uh, for Senator Hoyleman Siegel, have you had any conversations with uh, Governor Hochul um, about whether she's going to sign this legislation? And this being the second time this legislation has gone through the legislature, how do you see this um what are your feelings and how it's different? At least what was the last part of your question? I'm sorry. Um, the, this being the second time this bill has gone through the legislature, how is how is this different in, in terms of how you see it being successful? Well, um, I think this is uh, the first time the bill has been passed by both houses uh, as a same as, and that's a key uh, uh development in our efforts to pass this legislation. Uh, we have the backing of uh, a large number of advocates here on this call, but also researchers and, and scientists uh, and academics who have been studying this issue. And the evidence is only growing. Uh, the third thing that's different is that we have the guardrails in place that if there are not suitable alternatives, um, then um, we uh, pause uh, the restrictions until the market uh, makes those available uh, in a cost-effective way uh, to our farmers. Uh, so we think it's eminently reasonable, um, especially given the impact of neonicotinoids uh, and the growing concern about their negative impact on human health, as well as pollinators. Um, look, uh, we've had conversations with the executive. We don't normally discuss those uh, publicly, but um, the second floor knows that there is strong public support, support from the advocacy community, support from scientists and overwhelming support in both houses. So I hope that all points to a signature by the governor. I just do want to jump into this is a science-based surgically crafted bill that is specifically designed to only address seeds for corn, wheat, and soy, as well as neonics for ornamental use. It is really a, a bill that was carefully thought about based on a wide variety of science and experience in uh, places like Canada and, and the province of Quebec and Europe. Um, and, and so it's, it's a thoughtful piece of legislation 
that has a minimum impact really to farmers and the way they farm, but a maximum impact in protecting bees, pollinators, water resources, and public health. We really think this is a smart bill uh, that gets the job done. And I think that the governor and her staff will view it the same way. Um, so we have, I don't see any other raised hands, but I do see a question from Bob Keeler in the chat and I'll just read it out here. How much concern is there about the possibility that lobbying from the chemical industry will persuade the governor to veto the bill? Well, I'll answer that one. <laughs> we have a lot of concern about it. Um, you know, there's not a lot of opposition to this bill. However, the chemical industry is one of them. And, uh, you know, they've never seen an environmental protection bill that they like, frankly. So, you know, we are really hoping that the public interest wins out over corporate interest in this battle. And this is a classic battle between saving the public's health and a, a critical component of society, which is the bees, and letting the chemical industry do business as usual. As we know more, we're supposed to do better and we're supposed to change. This is a way that we should change our way of farming and doing things in society so that we can continue to be productive farmers, but also caretakers and guardians of the natural world. Um, let me add, thank you, Adrian. well said. I, I would add, it would be extremely sad and disappointing if we made decisions about agriculture, food production, protecting the public's health based on the American Chemistry Council's priorities. Because we know that that is a special interest, a lobby committed to one thing and one thing only, to make money for its members and protect its market share. Um, that's not what the public interest demands particularly when you're talking about dangerous chemicals like neonicotinoids. So this is a time for leadership to make New York a leader in restricting these dangerous chemicals in a manner that, as was said, is surgically devised to allow the industry to respond to these new regulations and produce suitable alternatives. We're not cutting anyone out of the equation. We are trying to disrupt the chemical and pesticide industry so they produce a product that is safer for farmers, safer for pollinators, and protects the human health. Great. So I am I'm not seeing any more um, questions in the chat. I'm not seeing any raised hands. So speak now or forever hold your peace. But thank you everyone for attending today. Thank you for uh, to our speakers um, and especially the senator. Um, we will be making a press release available after this and also a recording of this press conference. Um, so if you missed anything, that those will be going around. But again, thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Thank you. And happy World Honeybee Day. Yes. Ha happy World Honeybee Day. Please Saturday. create a buzz about it.